Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 24th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. According to an article in Dark Reading, researchers at cloud security company Viz.io have uh, discovered a novel way uh, to attack a software as a service providers that offer DNS, uh, for example, Amazon's Route 53, but pretty much all of the major cloud providers do have a DNS service that they offer, and apparently multiple of them are vulnerable. We'll have to wait for a talk at the upcoming Black Hat conference for additional details, but the dark reading article has a number of details. And apparently one problem here is that it's possible to get AWS, for example, to register a host name that matches an existing name server. If you're owning a domain, then you typically register that domain via a registra. And uh, if you want to run your own name servers, well, uh, then the NS records uh, have also to be registered with your registra. And you more or less uh, can often call these uh, name servers whatever you would like. They don't have to necessarily be within your domain and often they are not in your domain. And this appears to be one of the problems here, at least, where it is possible to register the host name of an existing name server record and then point it to your IP address. The end effect here is that if a victim is looking up a domain that is hosted with this particular name server, well, there's a good chance that your IP address is being returned and then you will be able to intercept the requests. And of course, gain whatever intelligence you typically can get from these requests. In particular, of course, with Windows, some Windows clients are still sending DNS update requests to the domain server that's responsible for their own domain, which then may tell you more about intricate client configuration issues. The problem with these arbitrary names of records is new and uh, you probably have seen articles in the past where someone discovered that via who is and uh, looking for some uh, big companies, you can sometimes find some odd name server records that other people left there. It's typically not a problem because, well, uh, you uh, can't really uh, point an existing uh, name server record uh, to your own IP address. But uh, with these cloud-based DNS services, so many domains are hosted behind uh, one particular name server records and being able to impersonate one of those name servers now, of course, is becoming a huge problem. Like in this case, they they claim that they were able to intercept DNS queries from 15,000 different AWS customers. And SOAR is a big uh, business uh, these days, usually referring uh, to automated actions uh, that are triggered by security alerts. And of course, this uh, typically means integrating various APIs in order to allow these automated actions uh, to uh, be executed. Palo Alto's uh, product in this sector is Cortex XSOAR and uh, Palo Alto just fixed a vulnerability that could allow an attacker uh, to turn this infrastructure against you. Apparently there is an unauthenticated uh, REST API that the tool exposes and an attacker who is uh, able to access uh, this API would be able to execute arbitrary actions within the platform. Pretty big issue if you are vulnerable. Now, not all versions of Cortex X or SOAR are vulnerable. Uh, only actually fairly recent versions are vulnerable and you need to have certain configuration options enabled. So if you're using the product, uh, double check uh, Palo Alto's advisory. And talking about security tools not implementing authentication correctly, VMware published an update to the Carbon Black app control. Also, an authentication bypass could allow an attacker with um, network access to the management server uh, to 
obtain administrative access. And of course, uh, with that NetHacker uh, could alter rules and uh, bypass Carbon Black or also launch a denial of service against the network by misconfiguring the tool. And the Electronic Frontier Foundation today published a statement that is uh, co-signed by a number of uh, security companies, including the Sands Technology Institute, uh, to alert the public of the consequences that the Digital Millennium Copyrights Act, or short DMCA, has on security research. One of the big problems here is that, yes, the DMCA Section 1201 does have a exemption for security researchers, but only if you are performing uh, this uh, research to protect your own network. If like, for example, uh, we are doing it here at the Sands Technology Institute, are uh, conducting security research and then publishing it to help others protect their networks. Well, uh, this is not covered by this exception and does expose uh, researchers uh, to liability or prosecution under uh, the Digital Millennium's Copyright Act. So that's really what this statement is about. And uh, today there's also a diary and a link uh, to the EFF blog about this particular statement. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.